religious man acknowledges God by different names and with different attributes. Systems of worship and self-improvement follow all seeking to gain God's favor. God, however, has not left the destiny of the soul to man's devices. Now, this series of what is salvation is a study of God's plan, the gospel of Jesus Christ, in his death, his burial, his resurrection. Christ does for man what he does not deserve and can't do for himself. By grace through faith, he establishes man righteous before God. Because the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, for Christ also, also suffered once for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. It also goes on to, 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 to say in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now let's look at the definition of salvation from Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. The definition according to the, the Webster's Collegiate Dif, uh, Dictionary says, it means deliverance from the power and penalty of sin and redemption. But the questions I'm, we're gonna be talking about and what we're gonna be studying tonight are a couple of things. The first thing we're gonna be talking about is, number one, why is salvation necessary? Why is salvation necessary? Well, the first answer to that is, salvation is necessary because all have sinned. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse 20, for there is not a just man on earth who does good and doesn't sin. It also goes on to say in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, But we are all like unclean things, and all our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. And then it goes on to say in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Salvation is also necessary because sin separates man from God. Sin separates man from God. Because if you remember, when God was in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, when he said it, from all these things in this garden you can eat freely of, except for the, the tree of good and evil, he said, on that day you eat, he said, you shall surely die. So on that day, when they both uh, partook of the fruit, it doesn't say apple, it says fruit, but that's another story. They died spiritually, and we're gonna talk about that later on in the lesson. But they immediately were separated from God. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 59, verse two, but your iniquities have separated you from God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Remember, all mankind fall short of God's glory. The Bible declares it in Romans chapter three, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we got sin is necessary because all have sinned. We have sin is necessary because sin separates man from God. And now sin, salvation is necessary because God has judged sin. God has judged sin. The Bible declares in Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. Then in John chapter three, verse 18, it says, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. So now that we know 
why salvation is necessary, what is salvation from? What is salvation from? Well, number one, salvation is from the penalty of sin, which is death. According to uh, Bible, the, uh, the Bible that we all fall short of the sin, that you know uh, the wages of sin is death. But remember, this is what I want you to get straight, that death, nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in the scriptures, means ceasing to live or the end of consciousness. Scripturally, death means to be separated. And there are three types of death that are described in the Bible. As we were, I was talking earlier about death and the separation. So the first type of death is physical death. I hope you guys are writing this down. If not, we record everything so you can go back and you can, whatever notes that you, you, you missed or whatever, you can go back. But it's always good to take your own notes. I found that was helpful for me when I was in school. But the first type of death is a physical death. Now, physical death is the immediate separation of the body from the soul and spirit. It's the physical death is the immediate separation of the soul uh, of the body from the soul and the spirit. Okay, the body is returned to the earth from whence it came, and the soul and the spirit go into eternity. The body said the Bible says that. Um, to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. The body's not going to heaven; it's going back to God. Well, you, well people say, "Well, uh, Apostle, God's in heaven." Guess what? The Bible says that He is omniscient. He is omnipotent, and He's omni what present. So, all we know, according to the Bible, that the spirit goes back to God. Okay, and that physical death, physical death, there is absolutely no scriptural basis of what they call a soul sleep, meaning that the body just goes into purgatory. There's no scriptural basis on that. So, so we're going to be debunking some myths uh, in this. So remember. This is a big thing because we, we've been discussing a lot of things about, uh, about death and about the end times and about who's going to be here, rapture, be caught up, blah, blah, blah. But the Bible says that man has an appointment with physical death. According to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it says, And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So the scripture refutes the false doctrine of reincarnation and the Bible teaches that man has only one and only one appointment with physical death, not many deaths over and over. So reincarnation is a satanic ploy to divert souls from the biblical truth that man must prepare to meet God at death. So understand that when he talks about in the twinkling of an eye, that happens when, when you meet that time. Your world is over. And a twinkling of an eye could be all over. I can go lay down and take a nap right now and it'd be all over. See, we're not talking about pie in the sky and all that kind of stuff because the Bible declares, I was reading it today and I think it was in Matthew, uh, I think it was the 20, I believe it was the 24th chapter uh, around the 24th verse, it talks about for four, if anybody says, uh, uh, lo, here's Christ, you know, he's over here, he's over there, said, so don't believe him. Understand, don't believe him, because that's not where God is at. So, physical death is the immediate separation from the body, from the soul and spirit. The second type of death is a spiritual death. Now, spiritual death is a separation from man from God, okay? Man from God, because every person that's born into a human family is actually spiritually dead. Think about it. Man is a trinity. 
created in the image of God, body, soul, and spirit. Physical birth imparts to a man a living body and a living soul, but his spirit is dead, meaning it's separated from God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin. And it goes on to say in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day, if you eat of it, you shall surely die. Understand that it was because of the spiritual death that Jesus told Nicodemus, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Hallelujah. Now the third type of death, and this is the worst one, is an eternal death. Eternal death. Now eternal death is just what the name implies. Man's eternal separation from God forever in the lake of fire. The Bible declares in Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 and 15, says, Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, physical death is appointed to every man. But eternal death, or the second death, is reserved only for those whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So those are the three deaths that the Bible talks about. A physical death, which is the immediate separation from the body, from the soul and the spirit. A spiritual death, which is the separation from man, from God. And the eternal death, which is the eternal separation from uh, man from God and that talking about in the lake of fire eternally you're done now we were talking about what salvation is actually from we talked about that's why we got these three types of death so salvation number one is from the penalty of sin which is death and we talked about the three types of death now salvation is from the power of sin the power of sin